Greetings and welcome to Spin a Yarn Live, the Tea Time Book Club and Crafting Circle. Sup, yo. So, so professional. Super puff. So Today, we are talking about the second arc of the One Piece series where we get Buggy the Clown. Woo, Buggy! Buggy's so cool, you guys. I mean, he doesn't really start out cool, but then he gets cool and it's, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty good. It's pretty, pretty awesome good. sauce, I'm not gonna lie. Alright, so for all of you watching now, one person, which may be my side computer here, um, <laughs> <laughs> post on hashtag yarn, it uh, all. hashtag yarn it all. I have a reminder that I'm working on um, yeah. on Twitter what you're currently working on for this um, this episode. I'm still working on this bookmark. Still, it should be easy. There's another project I want to be working on. I don't think I'm going to do the full background for that one. See, Paul keeps doing the same project every single time that we do this thing. You might notice I'm almost never doing the same no. project. It's not like I'm finishing these projects. Well, most of them. I'm just... I always have multiple projects on the needles. So I'll tell you what I'm doing right now, which I've actually already done once. This is from... This is from Knit Picks Online. It's called the Princess Pullover. It is a fairly complicated uh, cabling pullover. And I've already done it in this color. I did it for myself. But a friend of mine liked it so much, so I'm making one for her in purple. And I'm currently working on the second sleeve. Which, which is pretty sweet because the cabling pattern is the same on the sleeves as it is for the body. And on the body, it's front and back. So I pretty much have that pop pattern memorized at this point. So, it's going a lot faster than it did the first time I did it. <laughs> first time it took me quite a lot of time. Well, that just happens as you get more used to yeah. doing things. Of course, you also do a lot of crafting off-channel, whereas this bookmark I'm only doing on stream. Yes, I like to, part. when I get home from my corporate job, this is what I do to unwind. <laughs> Help me, everyone. Help me to make this my permanent job. <laughs> Go to my Etsy site, which I, I promise I will actually have one. One day. At some point. <laughs> one day. <laughs> and you can buy all the random stuff I make. Because I just okay. make random stuff. Um, so anyway, the tea. So today yes. we are having a herbal tea. And it is the Bonita Peach Rubius Tea. So this is another tea from the Spice and Tea Exchange in... Charleston, South Carolina. It's um, it's pretty good. It's got some orange elements to it, as well as a little bit of peach and like strawberry and stuff. Uh, it's a very, very light tea. And you know, the brewing instructions on here said to do it at 112 degrees Fahrenheit. If I make this tea again, and I probably will, I'm probably gonna do it at 200. Because it's creating a nice flavor, but, like, I don't know. I don't think it's burnt, but it's not quite where I would like it. Hmm. So I might do it at 200 and see what a difference that'll make. Maybe I'll steep it longer next time. I only did a five-minute steep, you know, per the instructions. So we'll see. But that's what we're drinking today. Delicious. <laughs> okay. Like it? Yeah, it's uh, it's decent. It's still hot, so you know my my little mouth that can't handle heat can't really taste anything at the moment. He has a very sensitive mouth, you guys. It's too too sensitive. It's it's kind of funny. But anywho, for both hot and cold, because I drink soda at room temperature because that's cold for me. Because <laughs> I'm weird. He is weird, but it's okay. I still love him. What am I? What are you doing? Hang on. I didn't mark it. Okay. Okay. I'm are on we an, good? I'm on an odd row. Which means I'm not doing any cable. Okay. Anyway. Yes. So. so one piece. piece. This is definitely one of the series, and we kind of talked about it for uh, the first book, where we can just nerd out. Like, anytime we're out um, at dinner or something, if one of us brings up One Piece, we'll just talk about it with each other 
For a long time. For a long time. Well, and it helps that the series has been going on for so long. It has. I think we mentioned before the manga, I believe, was started in 92 in Japan. And the anime, I believe, was started in 94. I might be off. It might have been that the manga was started in 94 and then the anime was in 96. I think it's a two-year difference. But in any case, it started in the early to mid-90s and it's still going. Both the manga and the anime. So if you've never seen it or read it before... It is a bit of a commitment to go yeah. ahead and try and watch it or read it all from the beginning. And the art style is definitely his own style, and it definitely gets more styled. Yeah. I'm not saying it gets good, but it it has interesting parts and then it has questionable parts, but I don't know, I feel like you can easily just read it if you're willing to get past. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the big hurdle for yeah. a lot of people, is they don't like the artwork, they especially don't like the animation. And while, yes, uh, with any show, the animation, of course, gets smoother down the line, but the style does not change. Yeah. It's still that weird style where perspective can make things look very odd. Like, if there's an intimidating figure, then, oh, it'll... You know, it'll strike a pose, often it's just a silhouette, and the figure might be curved in, like, some weird manner. Like, they're standing in a really odd or ominous way. And a lot of people are just like, that's kind of weird. I'm thinking of a particular villain that we haven't gotten to yet. Are you thinking about the next villain? Y yeah, I'm yeah. thinking about the, the villain at, at that one island, yes. Yeah, I was about to pull up his picture, but no spoilers! No spoilers, because that has not happened yet. We just faced off with Buggy the Buggy. Clown. So, yeah, I mentioned that we like nerding out about One Piece. One of our main nerding out bits is Buggy the Clown. Oh my gosh. Um, yes. Let's see. You can... You, oh, e, ah, e, you can kind of see him there, the, um, the clown-looking guy, obviously. Yeah, Buggy. buggy. Um, those bits of blue coming off the side of his hat, th that's, that's his hair. That's his hair. That's his hair. So... <laughs> Probably the most fascinating thing about Buggy, and again, we haven't really seen this yet, but every time we see him for a new a new arc or a new storyline that involves him in some manner, his appearance always changes. Yeah. Not like his face changes and his clown makeup changes. No, we're pretty sure that's probably mostly tattooed on his face at this point. Yeah. But his outfit will change. His hairstyle will change. Not the way he carries himself in any manner will change, but he's the one character really in this series that I feel like every time you see him it's more like a real person who actually yeah. changes his clothes <laughs> you know because in a lot of animated series people just wear the same thing right you know episode to episode which is true in one piece now after certain arcs go through some people will change yeah Luffy will almost always be wearing the same thing but you know, right now he's wearing this red vest. Eventually it'll go to a shirt that actually has... It's it's still a red shirt. He still wears it open, but it's actually going to have long sleeves. Yeah, Nami also often changes. I think, like, for each island. Yeah, Nami and Robin... <laughs> Nami and another character who will be joining us later. Um, no spoilers. They will change as well. Um, but, but, like, even Zoro, um, after certain arcs... His outfit will change a little and a little and a little. Yeah. And, like, now he definitely, in the current thing, he has a far more of a samurai look and feel to him. Whereas this one, he's just kind of known as this guy with the yellow band around his waist. Yeah. So, but but the cool thing about Buggy is every time we see him, it doesn't matter what arc we're on. Mm -hmm. Just every time we see him for a new time... He looks different. His hair is yeah. different, or he's wearing a different outfit, or his hat is different or something. He is a really... Fun character. Now, down yeah. the line, I certainly have my favorite, and you know what my favorite outfit of his is. Mm -hmm. And it's really... The funny thing is, is that my favorite outfit is really the most plain. Yeah. Like, he's not... He's just kind of wearing... He's just wearing really, like, a white t-shirt and white pants and really simple shoes. And uh, his hair is in a ponytail. Yeah. What's really cool, though, is that, as Oda Sensei will do, when time passes, he illustrates that... The best way he illustrates it later on is the hairstyle change yeah. i.e. if someone's gonna let their hair grow out they let it grow out so uh with buggy it's kind of the same thing because if you look at his design actually if you look at the design here i take it back his hair is probably the same length yeah his hair is probably the same length but he just has it done back in a very simple ponytail 
and he's not wearing a hat at all. And it's really interesting to see him so normal. Yeah. Well, but his, his uh, personality is over the top enough that I think counteracting it with kind of a normal looking outfit mm. really sets it off, I think. Instead of like going over the top in both personality and outfit like mm -hmm. we get here, having the outfit toned back a lot just makes him feel more real, I think. Yeah. Like you were saying. Yeah. It's, just, it's a really good arc, and <laughs> but it's really down the line. So yeah, you need to stick with us for a while. We'll get to it when we get to it, but it's going to be a hot minute, you guys. Okay. Even if the One Piece is the only thing we focused on, it would take us a while. <laughs> yes. It, it, I don't even know what volume it is. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's one in the 60s. Yeah, which is why I'm trying to go arc by arc. That's going to get a little difficult, and we'll... Yeah, because, like, cause... for the arc that, we, that we've that we just done, um, it's actually only a few chapters in to the third one. And it starts a few volume. chapters in the first one. Yeah. Okay, so in volume three, we have chapters 18 through 26, and chapter 22 is when the new arc begins. Yeah. Which is a little mini arc, which is, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of sweet. But And yeah, the very last chapter in the first volume is of the same. Starts this one. Yeah. Yeah, it starts this particular arc. So So just a one and a little bit Yeah. Uh, manga arc. But they there's gonna it's gonna be, you know, definitely like ten volume arcs in but, the future. And that's what like Paul and I were trying to figure out so hard, how are we going to do this? And I kept on saying maybe we should just do it volume by volume, but when I did, when I was, so volume two, obviously, is kind of the main chunk of this particular arc. And I have to agree that it would have been awkward to both begin and end with just this yeah. one. Yeah. So, yes, but there were, but as he says, the arcs. Yeah, some of the bigger arcs we might be able to break down, but we'll see when we get there. No. For now, we're talking about our introduction <laughs> to Buggy. Actually, of all the arcs, I think this might be my least favorite arc. I love Buggy, as is obvious. I love a lot of the um, little details that happen, but I don't know, for some reason it just doesn't connect with me. There's a... It's I mean, a bit of a slowness, it's a bit of a meandering around. It's still getting to know these characters, yeah. really. Because, I mean, the first arc where we get... Really, the first arc, the point of the first arc is, of course, to introduce our main right. character, Luffy, but also to bring on the next crewmate, which is yeah, Zoro. Zoro. Now... I will say one of the things that kind of annoys me about these particular volumes, and I don't know why. I really, really, really don't know why. And we have, we own up to what? Volume 10. 10 yeah. And they're still doing it. Zorro, and his name is Zorro, okay? Yeah. It's Z-O-R-O. -O, all right? It's not two R's, like, like Zorro, like the mask of Zorro, but, which I think is two R's, but it, it is Zorro. But I guess because American translators thought kids would get a little confused. Because Zoro's not a terribly well known superhero. But, you know, I mean, but there was know, that movie with Antonio Banderas and But also, if you know him that. for anything, you know him because he can, he uses swords. He uses a sword. So, Either the pointy end or the other end. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the pointy end goes into the other man. Um, that's a completely different movie. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> Actually, it's not. No, no, no. Yeah. Because it is Antonio Banderas. He sounds a whole lot like an, an, um, an Inigo Montoya. Oh, in that gosh. particular thing. Because, like, you know, Antonio Banderas will sometimes exaggerate his Spanish accent. But anyway. Um, so, for whatever reason, the translators decided to go with Rono Nora Zolo. They put an L in there. Which is weird. Which is really weird. Because if you watch the anime, it is true that in a lot of Asian languages, particularly Japanese, the R's and the L's can kind of roll together a little bit. But when you listen to it, it really sounds like Zoro. Yeah. It, it really, really does. The way Luffy says it, the way Nami says it, the way all the characters, even the way Zoro will announce himself, it sounds like there's an R in there. And I can understand uh, localizing for American audiences. Like in Pokemon, the main character, Satoshi, is mm -hmm. now named Ash. Um, yeah. Team Rocket, instead of being um, Musashi and, oh gosh, 
and the other one <laughs> um, <laughs> is now Jesse and James, which makes sense because not many Americans know Musashi, oh, the samurai, well, the ronin, and the other one, <laughs> um, who was kind of Musashi's big rival, sort of. Um, but yeah. in Pokemon... Having those two named that just adds a bit of flavor, but it doesn't add any flavor in English, so no no reason not to change it. However, in One Piece, changing from Zoro to Zolo makes it sound even it's just weird. 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 It's just weird. Because we don't have very many words that go Olo like that. We don't. While sounding American. <laughs> and, that, and that was, maybe that was a mistake on the... On the translator's parts. Not not for the manga, but for the anime. When the anime first came over, uh, Four Kids Entertainment yeah. bought it. We, won't, we won't go into that because... We already that ran into it last Did we? we probably, that's probably why that episode is probably two hours because we ran so <laughs> about how terrible translation is. But like for stuff like that, I can kind of understand. You know, for Ash and Jesse and James yeah. and all that, those are easier names. You know, it's a kid's show. Yeah. It is. Now, when Four Kids Entertainment bought One Piece. They probably assumed it was a kid's show. And then they watched yeah. it. And anyway. Got um, rid of all the bits. <laughs> it's but, not for you guys. But Zolo is not an easier name than Zoro. Zolo is not an easier name. It, it is harder, in my opinion, for, to say. Yeah, for Americans or English speakers. I don't know about how easy it is for UK. I know um, there are languages where that is a more common uh, syllable type hmm. so that they'd be able to get around. But not English. Not English. Americans have a hard time saying Zolo and making it sound not crazy. Yeah, it's just odd. So, anyway, I just kind of ignored that while I read it. Yeah. But uh, in, the, in the manga, it's just so interesting, this arc, because it kind of starts to sort of kind of highlight that it, it I guess it's more of a difference in spirit the way Luffy and Zoro and even Buggy will approach a fight because even though Luffy and Buggy have swallowed devil fruit and you know uh, Luffy is made of rubber and Buggy's swallow the chop chop fruit so he can separate his body parts so like you know Zoro goes to slice him up but it doesn't really affect him because that's something that he can do. Yeah. Sort of like how you can punch Luffy all you want, but because he's made of rubber, unless you have a certain ability that we get into later, you're not really going to do any damage to him. you got to slice him. So, but Zoro has not swallowed any fruit or anything, but he has this will. You know, he has yeah. this will and, his, and this drive to become the best swordsman in the world. I believe we already went over why. Yeah, uh, yes. Because of Quina. I believe that was in the first one. Yeah, well, verified, but... Yeah, it has to have been by now, so it's got, I'm gonna it's say yes. It's gotta have been by now. So... Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, you see the flashback. Yes. So we already know... Oh, God, it's terrible. It's terrible. It, just, it makes you cry, guys. I mean, his flashback is nothing compared to Nami's when we get there, but it still, it makes you or cry. Or any of them. I mean, that's one of the best things about Oda Sensei is it's oh, a... Uh, this is a comedy series... But he'll get you. Like, in this one, not to sidetrack you too much, but we get a similar story in the arc we're currently on as, I don't know, pulled from something old, I'm sure, um, as Futurama did with the dog who waits for the owner and makes you cry. Mm. And so we get another very similar thing here where instead of the dog waiting for the owner, the dog knows the owner is dead, but is still guarding the owner's store. He's guarding the treasure. Which oh. it is. It's 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 heart wrenching. And I mean, oh gosh, <laughs> I gotta say it right now. I love Oda Sensei. I really mm -hmm. do. I love One Piece, hands down, favoriteest anime manga. You know, like one of my favoriteest things to come out of Japan, except for maybe Matcha Tea a little. <laughs> anyway, um, but man, as funny and as fun as this series is, every once in a while he will just punch you in the gut with something yes. that will leave you crying like not hysterically but man this guy does things 
<laughs> and I won't say what they are, but, you know, like, Nami is related to this. <laughs> I think we said before, if you can make it all the way to Nami's arc, either in the man anime or the yeah. manga, whichever, you'll get hooked. Yeah. Because when you figure out why she's doing all that she's doing, holy crap. And then once you get to the <laughs> climax of that whole story, of that arc, mm-hmm. yeah, at that point, if you're not hooked, A, you don't have a soul. <laughs> <laughs> and B, you know, then just One Piece is not for you. One Piece is not for you. Because the whole rest of the series is basically summed up with what we get up until the end of Nami's arc. Yeah. Like, um, just the whole... It, oh. I mean, it, of course, gets better writing as time goes on, but it's basically that what you yeah. get from chapter one to the end of Nami's arc is... What One Piece is all about. And he does kind of do it. Like, um, when the dog loses uh, the food store, Mm -hmm. you know, the the pet food store, one of Buggy's crewmates just burns it down. And so, you know, he's obviously very, very upset. You know, this treasure that his, you know, master left him in charge of when he went to the hospital. He's like, you're in charge until I get back from the hospital. Of course, he never gets back from the hospital. And then they got, you know, these pirates just burn it to the ground. And Luffy is like, so, and so Luffy's a very simple guy and we love him for it. You mm-hmm. know, that's both an advantage and sometimes a disadvantage because he's a terrible liar, <laughs> which will get, I mean, that, that's so funny. Best scene ever. Um, best scene ever. Um, and he's naive to the point of trusting the wrong people. But that's also why he's so kind and why some, and it enables him to understand how when something so precious gets destroyed, you know, he will, because he knows, because his hat is the most precious thing to him. So the dog loses his treasure. So he's like, well, that is not acceptable. So he gets a serious Luffy face on, which is a rare enough occurrence that when you see it, you're just like, yeah. Seriously, you know, because that's when he really kicks butt. That's when he's just like, I'm not going to put up with any of this anymore. You cannot treat people like this. You know, we're dogs. You can't treat anybody <laughs> like this. Yeah. So. Here we go. Serious face. Nice, serious face. Serious, angry face. So this was just before. See, the other thing in talking about that, we have a scene after um, the dog's treasure gets burned down up over there. And then... Down over here, we get a scene um, where Luffy just sits with the dog for a bit. Like, he understands that the dog is... Um, mourning and is upset. Mourning, and, and he sits there and... Um, yeah, so, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, Luffy was able to save one box of dog food um, and handed it to the dog. And the dog goes off with it, turns around, and basically thanks him. By going, woof! Woof! <laughs> Which is uh, up over there. But, um... You cannot have any of this. But despite Luffy being this... Mm. Co- <laughs> <laughs> this uh, comedic character being very goofy, he gets super serious when things matter, which is something he got from Shanks that we saw in the first episode. Mm-hmm. A lot of things you can pass off, but there are some important things. Mm-hmm. Um, and for Luffy... It's his hat, so he knows that other people have treasures that are not necessarily just gold, gold and, and silver. Jewels, yeah. And he also waits for the other person to show conviction. Mm-hmm. We saw that with Kobe, where uh, Luffy was perfectly willing to be with all of um, Alvita's pirates and joke about Kobe until Kobe actually uh, stood up to Alvita. And, of course, Kobe uh, couldn't actually do anything to the this pirate. So Luffy was like, ah, there it is. Just <laughs> move back a little bit. I'll take care of this. Mm-hmm. You've shown your conviction. I will help you. Yes. And so we get that with the dog who's willing to stand up to this huge lion. We get, this, we get that with, with the mayor the... who's trying to stand up to the... Listen. Listen. <laughs> I need to move this slightly further. I realize this is the star of the show. It guys, is the star. But he can he can be a little scamp. He's the best one. He's a little scamp. He is scamp. Anyway, um, yes. When 
indeed, when they show conviction and they really want to stand up for whatever it is they're doing, like with the mayor in this one. And the mayor is totally like, I am so going to kick butt because these guys are terrible and they're destroying our town and I'm going to go do it. And Luffy is like, okay, this guy's conviction is strong and I understand that, but he's going to get himself killed. Yeah. So if I don't do something, he will die. So Luffy then just knocks him out. Shoves him right into a wall. Shoves knocks him right him into out. a wall and knocks him out. And Nami's like, what are you doing? You know, Nami's freaking out about it. And, it's, and he's and it's just like, like... He would get in the way. He would totally get in the way. Like, that's what he says. But of course, we know it's just... He would definitely get himself killed if yeah. he tried to do anything. Yeah, Luffy's Luffy already understands the conviction, so he's just setting him aside mm -hmm. so that Luffy can take care of it. Mm -hmm. um, and he's totally Luffy in the future is totally willing to let people take care of their own things. But if somebody really needs help, yeah, if they Luffy is there. Yeah. yeah, he is there to help when other people can't. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's definitely one of the things that you start seeing in this chapter. Um, there's a lot of times where Luffy is just in the cage, mm -hmm. not quite sure what's going on. And that happens in a lot of arcs where Luffy has no idea what's going on. So he just kind of... He goes along with whatever is happening. Yeah. Like, oh, Nami's going to tie me up. Okay. I'm not sure why, but okay. This, this... <laughs> This little baby, who you can tell, I've got up like this. He's not very little, but he needs to behave. None of that is for you. Mm -hmm. None of that is for you. Did you get in trouble? I did. <clears throat> so. Um, so, one of the questions, I, I, I'm trying to pull out um, unique questions for each series, something that's primarily about that series so one of my questions for one piece is in this arc what was your favorite use of a power because in one piece everybody has different powers in including uh zoro who doesn't actually have a devil fruit but he has various sword techniques and oda sensei is really good at coming up with interesting ways of using them mm -hmm. <sighs> I'm trying to think, because, like, Zoro is probably, hands down, my favorite character. Yeah. He's, like, later in the series as we watch him, you know, he is the first mate, and he embodies all that that requires. Yes. Even if sometimes it doesn't make his captain happy. Yep. Which is very important. Mm -hmm. So, I'm trying to think of, like, when Zoro made me happy in this in this series in this particular arc and um you know he's got a he goes into a fight with the acrobat and i'm just not sure if this is my favorite part like he cuts himself he oh the, the, yeah the, 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 the acrobat has been kicking a wound that buggy the stabbed uh zorro and so he's got this wound in his side and the acrobat keeps kicking him in the wound which of course like nami and um luffy are like you are not playing fair, you know, that is not honorable, you know, stuff like and that. And of course Buggy's like, well, of course not, we're pirates. Yeah, but you know, but Luffy is... Honorable. A very honorable man. Or kid at this point. But yeah. he... he <laughs> flash forward to where we currently are in the manga and woo! But anyway, um, so Zoro uh, is, gets tired of the acrobats circus show and like because he's always saying oh circus act you know climbing the mountain or yeah. the top thing or whatever and so Zoro's like, Zoro's like I am so tired of all of your BS so he goes and he like slices his wound even further he does it himself and he's like if I cannot defeat you when I am this you know only slightly hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Only slightly hurt. He's going to bleed out soon. Um, then, you know, I don't even have this stuff to become the world's greatest swordsman and all that. And, of course, he defeats him in one move. Yeah. And I think because we get the translation in the manga, this is the first time we see his onigiri, which is demon slash. Which is funny because it's also a pun um. because onigiri also means rice ball. <laughs> So it's just kind of weird, and I'm not sure. I guess it's just supposed to be a funny pun or a funny play on words. But yeah. at the same time, I'm like, so... If he says onigiri, I think it would be funnier 
if he would say onigiri, and Zoro or and uh, Luffy would kind of perk up and be like, "Food? <laughs> oh no, it's just but it's not <laughs> meat. It's only rice." <laughs> it's true. He's a huge meat fan. But anyway, <laughs> so uh, I guess in terms of in terms of power, because yeah, Zoro doesn't really have a fruit power, but his strong will is yes. kind of his greatest power. So I guess that's probably my favorite power use in this particular arc. What about you? Well, I've lost the needle. Well, that's not good. Well, um, yeah, no, I actually uh, forgot that he stabbed himself in the wound. Again, that just, it's so Zoro. It's very Zoro. It's so good. It's so good. So, I mean, there's not too much in this arc, and we'll get more as time goes on. Um, so mine is the very first time we see Buggy's ability. Ability. Uh, I thought about that one too. Yeah. So that this one actually goes before hers, um, but Zoro's fighting Buggy and slices him, and Buggy falls to pieces. Um, which is weird that Zoro didn't notice that there wasn't much friction there, but... Or any blood whatsoever. Yeah. So, there's a bunch of just pieces of buggy lying behind Zoro. And he's like, and that was too easy, I'm almost yeah. embarrassed. Yeah. yeah, he's a pirate hunter, so he's definitely dealt with super weak, um, pirates before, I'm sure. Um, so he didn't think about that, and of course, um, buggy's ability is to split into parts, so what he did is he faked being cut and played dead convincingly he did and it legit and when you're watching it it's convincing the first time because like, oh, well, you don't know about this ability okay and then you're like that's strange does he does he have like another body somewhere else is that his ability and then all of a sudden there's a knife sticking through um zoro's abdomen, abdomen from the back and you look and it's buggy's hand just floating by itself and then Buggy rises up into all the pieces, and it's like, oh, we're doing this now. That's nifty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, I yeah, mean, the ability to break yourself at the speed of a cut to be convincingly... Destroyed. Destroyed, yeah, yeah. Was just really cool for me. Yeah, it's also a good scene because the rest of his crewmates are laughing. Oh, yeah. You know, they're just kind of laughing in a little head. <laughs> kind of way and it's fun how in manga they don't really do this very much in american graphic novels but in manga they put a lot of sound effects in the t in the images yes um and sometimes they're really silly like i guess just the way it's translated in this we get a lot of ta-da <laughs> or doom. doom you know doom is a big one but um but so they've got like, even when you see panels, when you're just looking at Zoro or Luffy and Nami or whatever, and they're speaking, you see in the sides of the panels, you see the <laughs> yeah. you know, like, uh, crewmates of Buggies are just, he has no idea what's going on. This is great. So, it is a good scene. It's a good introduction to what is a very odd power, because you sit there going, well... Zoro can't fight this guy because he can't slice him up because that's what he does. He gets sliced up. So it is fun the way that Luffy defeats him. Yes. Although in some ways Nami Nami helps mm -hmm. because she's she's a thief. So she steals various parts and ties them up and she's like, oh, you can't have these back. Yeah, no, that was really mostly um, Nami's strategy that ended up beating um, Nami's buggy. quick thinking. Yeah. Which is funny that you say strategy because you know who becomes the strategist. Yes. In this crew, I it's mean, very funny. <laughs> yes, but Nami is definitely right up there in the strategy. She is sucked. She is, but like, so later on we get a crew member where it's not really noticeable until later, and I think it's actually before the two-year hiatus thing. But there's a particular crew member who, at some point, with all the other crap going on, you notice he's not there. And all of a sudden you go, uh-oh. -uh. Yeah. Where's this guy? What's he doing? Can't be good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, can't be good for the enemy. Yeah. So uh, so it's, it's, it's very, very fun. And that's another great thing about the series is that the characters grow. Mm -hmm. And not only do they grow physically, which is neat and I think is really cool the way that Oda-sensei does it, pretty slowly. Like, 
like I said, later on there's going to be a two year hiatus, and it's it's in universe. It's not that it's not that Oda Sensei took a two year hiatus, although I was terrified that that's what I, it actually. Oh my meant. goodness! Yeah. But it was actually like more like two months where he was building up another buffer and whatnot. But that jumped. Um, so with the two year jump, since a lot of the crew members are fairly young, the idea is that Luffy is seventeen. Um, I think the working theory is that Nami is maybe eighteen. Maybe 19, Zoro is 19 or 20, you know, and then it jumps to two years. So those who are youngest, like Luffy and a couple of other crew members, become noticeably, you know, coming out of adolescence. You know, noticeably they're, 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 they're taller or their hair is longer or they're more muscled or, or what have you. Uh, but even before that, it's very subtle. Mm -hmm. And Nami is kind of one of the aspects. Because, like, Zoro, you know, he's a dude, he doesn't really change much. Luffy as well. You know, Luffy goes from being kind of noodly looking and slowly his body gets a little bit more muscled, you know. So, but Nami, her hair starts off in not quite a, not quite like a pixie cut, but it's a really short cut. Yeah. It's super short. But as the series goes, you don't really notice it, but it gets longer. It gets longer, it gets longer. Same with another character who we'll see soon. And then you like after the two-year hiatus, she doesn't cut her hair at all, so her hair is super long. Um, and it's just, it's really, even though a lot of people can't get past the animation or can't get past the drawing style of Oda Sensei, there are certain aspects of his style that are just so subtle. Yeah. That just continue. Like if you if you were to take volume one and buy the most current volume, which is, I don't know, 87, 89, whatever it is. Something. And look at it, you're, you see that difference. You yeah. see that jump. And even after the two-year hiatus for Luffy and for one of the other characters that we'll see later, and kind of Zoro, although there is a, a physical change in Zoro, um, you know, the only real difference is that they're a little bit taller and they're more muscled. And they look they look less like boys and more like men. Mm -hmm. You know, now, Lu now Nami kind of levels up, too, because Japan. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, she becomes less of a... 17, you know, ish looking Japanese girl into more of a woman in that she doesn't really have a rib cage. <laughs> um, yeah. And organs, you know, are that optional. Are, yeah, that are in the waist area are indeed optional. And this is another thing that people are like, I don't know, because in this, you know, she's, she's a teenager. So she looks like a teenager and the animation is fairly, is fairly tame with her. But then, it, yeah, then. it definitely gets to into bad women's anatomy. Mm-hmm. I don't know where it is. It's gone forever. I need a magnet. I know. We'll look for it after the stream. Yeah. Um. I made a mess. You can eat that one. Okay. <laughs> um. But and yeah, if you just look at the covers of most recent One Piece, I would understand people looking at and thinking that's very Japan about women. And in some aspects it kind of is, but unlike Naruto, which I had really high hopes for after the first episode and the first little arc, um, in Naruto, your female characters almost immediately became completely useless. They can fight, or they are all healers, which is a big trope in a lot of... A lot of um, animes. Yeah, a lot of animes. The woman is the healer, and even if they can fight, it's fighting with healing techniques, and it's like... Ugh. You know, I never thought about it, but they tried to do that in Avatar. Yeah, with Katara. They, 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 kind, of, they kind of made fun of the trope. They did. And, Av and Katara was like... Yep. <laughs> she did, uh, she still did do, um, healing, but... But she was also one of the muscles. She was primarily one of the, um, muscle. Yeah. Um, and, like, in this, we don't get that at all. Like, none of the female characters are healers. We don't. In fact, another female character who will come along later adds a kind of reputation to the crew. Mm -hmm. Because she is really feared. Yeah. Because she's very notorious. Yeah. So, and, and very infamous as well. And is constantly being hunted by the world government until Luffy yeah. said, Ha, you're funny, guess what? <laughs> and that's a wonderful art. Yes, we, that's one of the ones we're looking forward to doing. <laughs> but yeah, so even even back in the beginnings... Yeah, because I mean, um, Nami, Nami's a thief. 
But that's not really what Luffy sees because he asks her, he's like, hey, can you navigate? And she's like, I am a fabulous navigator. And she <laughs> goes, that is awesome because you know what? We really need one because we suck at trying to figure out where we're going to go. Because, I don't know, they're men. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. But so, <clears throat> and, and like what is fun is that, you know, Nami acknowledges that even Zoro, who doesn't have a devil fruit ability, she's like, he's not really human either. Yeah. Because his strength is ridiculous. So, like, Luffy gets put into this iron cage, and they they mention how it took five men to carry the cage out <laughs> to put it in. To put him in yeah. There. And Zoro just picks it up after he's been stabbed, by the way. Yeah. And Luffy's like, your guts are going to spill out. And he's like, meh, I'll just shove him back in. <laughs> and, you know, he, he lifts up. Oh, I lost my pants. <laughs> he, he lifts up the cage, and they make a quick escape while no one can see what's going on. And Nami is like... What? Cause look, cause that's kind of the fun thing about the start of the crew. Is yeah. everyone looks pretty normal. Yeah. Everyone looking kind of looks like oh you know they're teenagers or or older maybe early twenties you know that kind of stuff. And a lot of people make the mistake of thinking well they're young so they don't really know what's going on. They don't know you know how to, how to do this or that or whatever. But problem problem with thinking that. Is that, and this is something that I kind of advocate in my life, is that you never know what someone's background mm-hmm. is. You would never know if, you know, Zoro's, I mean, now Zoro has three swords on his, uh, on his belt, so you might, you might be like, well, now, wait a minute. But, you know, you wouldn't maybe know off the top of your head, oh, he's been training since he was like seven or eight years old. Yeah. And he's been training specifically to be the best swordsman in the world. You look at Luffy, who's this goofy little kid, and you're like, oh, whatever, it's like, and even though Luffy never received any specific training, at least not yet, um, <laughs> he still fought. You know, he practiced and he practiced and he was kind of self-taught to figure, to become a very much a bare fist fighter. Yeah. You know, and then there's then there's the the chef. Where you're like, oh, he's a chef. He's not gonna punch us because he's his hands are so important. Well, that's true. But guess what? There's more than one weapon on your hand, on your body. And then they're, and then so, yeah. the sharpshooter. I mean, you know, it's like all these people that you're like, oh, well, but they're just a bunch of kids. It's like, yeah, but they're a bunch of kids who spent their entire life doing this, that, or the other. That's one of the, um, quote unquote, power fantasies of One Piece. Mm-hmm. Is like, we as millennials were always told by society that to succeed, you have to work hard. Mm-hmm. And in One Piece, that's a world where that actually is solid advice. If you work hard, mm-hmm. you can become superhuman. And that's kind of power fantasy that working hard does work. Mm-hmm. So, like, even um, next arc, the character we get next arc seems pretty weak, but, like, just over time, he's forced to work hard, and he becomes one of the powerhouses. I mean, it is... This particular character. Who we'll talk about next time. But he has the best transformation. In he does. my opinion. He, he has does. the best. Even though Nami, you know, Nami starts off, we already see in this arc that she has a little bit of a fighting ability with a staff weapon. Yeah. Yeah, you know, she has the staff weapon that she's able to, you know, get out and, and beat people up with. Um, and she's, she's pretty fast and light on her feet. You know, she's a cat burglar, so she can be very quiet, which is good. She's good at sneaking around, which is helpful because... No one else on the crew is, is quiet. No. <laughs> um, except maybe the other female, but she finds it amusing when things don't go as planned. So, you know. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Nami is very much about plans. But so even Nami, who definitely does not start out as a powerhouse, and strength is not her, like physical strength is not what she does. You know, in a very Japanese kind of way, we're going to leave the physical strength to the men. Fine. Because Nami and the other female of the crew, they don't really need physical strength in order to kick butt. Because, well... <laughs> they're smart. <laughs> they're smart. They're, they're very intelligent, first of all. But also, it's not so much that Nami, like... It's not like a training montage with Nami. Nami gains knowledge, and the knowledge is her power. And she's able to create a new weapon with the with the aid of another um character uh, crewmate who is very good uh with tools and working with his hands and whatnot because <clears throat> yeah they're not the powerhouses 
but in their own way they become powerhouses and even though nami become is more looked at in the crew as the cat burglar like for the longest time that's what's on her wanted poster when it comes up yeah is uh she's the cat burglar nami but later i don't think it's changed yet but it's going to change it does to something else because now she is a physical threat Mm -hmm. in what she does so it's really, really interesting. And also, also, so, so, so Luffy is Did I mention we like captain. to nerd out about this? Yeah. So Luffy is definitely the captain. He is the captain, yes. right? And <clears throat> even though he's one of the younger members of the crew, it's, it's him and two others are the youngest members of the crew. And, but still all of these other, uh, crew members are going to follow him. But if he tries to do something stupid, if anybody on the crew tries to do something like really, really stupid, Nami will shut them down in an instant. And that's a great thing about because none of the other crewmates really push Luffy around in any manner physically, really. Yeah. But Nami does. Yeah, like <laughs> Zoro will as a first mate, but he keeps it as that position. Mm-hmm. Whereas Nami will just not put up with anything. No, and she'll kind of overstep her authority, I guess, and still, like, smack around her captain and the first mate. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really, really funny, and I absolutely love it. So, yeah, so this is a good... So this is a really good... We had an introduction to how Luffy can fight and, and all that in, in the previous arc, but this arc kind of lends itself to the fact that even if you're a really good fighter... There are going to be situations that are going to come up that you can't handle alone. Yeah. So, you know, Luffy needed help to get out of certain situations and even to defeat the bad guy in the end because Nami was the one who tied up a lot of his bits. Yeah. Which sounds terrible. But But you know what I'm talking about if you've read the manga. You know what I'm talking about. Or read the, or watched the anime. Yeah. So it's just, it's it's really interesting how we see... And it also is a good character development for him because there's no point where he's upset about getting help. Like a lot of man the action heroes of America, having someone help you is a good thing, is a lesson that they have to learn. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's not with Luffy. He set out to find a crewmate because he already knows. He needs help. He doesn't know where he's going. He can't handle a sword. He can't his lie. His sucks. He can't cook. I mean, yeah, he can't lie. It's really, it's, oh, God. So he knows he needs help. And that's definitely one of his charms because, yeah, he's looking for a crew that is a family. Yeah. Um, and it's, that... Well, and sometimes he doesn't always know who he's looking for. Yeah. Like when he first meets the next person that we, that we meet... You know, he doesn't instantly say, you should join my crew. Until later. I think even until the end of the arc. Yeah. He doesn't say, you should totally come with me. Uh, but uh, but, he, but he does. And it's just, it's... It really is family. Yeah. And it's it, it works so, so well. Nice. So yeah, even though the art gets questionably Japanese <laughs> in the future, it's not like... An exaggeration of certain yeah. things. It's... There is kind of this underlying respect for women, despite the bad women's anatomy. And it works. Um, it does. And it's a really good series, even if it, if the artwork is off-putting at first. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, if you've been here and listened to both of our episodes, you should just read it. Um, or watch it. It's on Hulu. Hmm. whole series is on Hulu. Um, No. I don't know how up to date it is, but from the beginning. Yeah. Now, I don't know. That's the only thing is I don't know what version. Yeah. Um. I hope it's Toonami. I can't imagine that anybody's leaving the four kids version of because it. I really hope not. Because the four kids took about ten or twenty volumes of the manga, something like twenty, fifteen to twenty episodes. And condensed it down to about, like, four episodes. Because that's all they could take out of it. And it's just... Insane. It's not It's not for kids, okay? There's violence. There is bad language. There's gore. Zoro yeah. is almost always drunk. Okay? 
<laughs> he's a good drug. He's a functioning alcoholic. A functioning alcoholic. <laughs> Do we need to talk about function. leverage? Yeah. <laughs> it don't, but yeah, and then there's a lot of blood. Yeah. Now, of course, in the manga, almost all manga is in black and white. So, fine. But if you watch the anime, they just let the blood fly. Yeah. It's, it, it's like Helsing. Blood everywhere. Because <laughs> I don't think anyone actually drinks the blood. Do they not? In, no. Wait, in Helsing or in... No, in One Piece. In One Piece? I don't think so. I don't think anyone drinks blood no. in One Piece. Even to be creepy. I don't think so. No. I mean, there's that one horror arc, but I can't remember anything like that. Mm. Anyways, we'll, we'll see when ghosts. we get there. Yeah. yeah. That's more about ghosts. <laughs> we'll get a really fun character in that one. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's the Orange Island arc. Is what this... uh arc is called. Is it? Yep. Oh. Oh, that's right, because she has tangerines. No, no, this arc is the Orange Island right. arc. Right. Yeah. And that's why I was confused. I was like, oh, oh what about yes, yes. that, but she has yes. tangerines. And that was um, an interesting, that was an interesting difference. It's been a while since I've seen the first few episodes of the, of the anime. <coughs> Give me. But, Nami actually says in the manga... She tells Luffy that she is stealing because she needs to get a hundred million berry to or berries to purchase a village. She actually straight up says that. Yeah. And I don't remember her doing that in the anime. We don't really realize what's going on until later. Now, there's no explanation given as to why she's doing this, but We'll get into it later. But yeah, foreshadowing. A foreshadowing. Um, and Luffy already yeah. declared that she was his navigator, so there's no escape. No, there's no escape. Just, you, you, you gotta learn. I mean, Zoro learned it eventually. It's like, well, if he says you're on the crew, sorry. Oh, man. I can't. <laughs> yeah. You're on the crew. Like, yeah, later when we get our medic, um, the medic is like, I'm not going to going with you. And Luffy straight up, in the anime at least, I haven't read the manga that part of the manga and the anime he says shut up come with me <laughs> and he's just like uh <laughs> and, his, and his teacher was like go on and he's like but i okay <laughs> <laughs> you know because he's just like yeah. i don't really want to and Luffy's like yeah you do come on it's just like okay <laughs> i guess i do because his personality will just steamroll you and again yeah. that's what's charming about him because he's never once I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if he ever chose a crew member and it was a mistake that he chose that crew well, member. No. I don't think so. Now, there is a crew member that he chooses at one point who cannot stay with the crew. Yeah. But that's also kind of fun, given who that individual is. <laughs> Wait, which one? Vivi. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking, <laughs> it's like, well, she can't really let anyone know she's on the crew, but she's on the crew. Yeah. And it's a thing, and it's a thing because we'll tell you later. Because <laughs> we'll tell you later. Because <laughs> we'll tell you later, because it's just kind of like, uh... Yeah. <laughs> so it's really, so. really good. And then there's, and then again, there's Buggy, <laughs> who... He comes back, and it's just glorious. Oh my god! I mean, we'll talk about him every time he comes back. Mm -hmm. But it's like, in this one, I think um, Oda Sensei just had him as another throwaway captain. Yeah. And but, not really expecting him to take off, but he, he did, really did, and then... I'm trying to think, though, actually, if his appearance is different when we see him the very next time. I'm not sure. We'll Maybe look out for it when we get there. Yeah. Maybe it's not until they get actually get into the red line and they keep meeting up with him. Yeah. Maybe then his appearance changes. Did you want more tea? Yes, please. Um, but so anyway, we got about five minutes left. So let's uh, let's wrap it up. And uh, talk about our next, uh, our next okay. read. Let me just browse hashtag yarn it all on Twitter. No posts, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're, we're still going. It says there's two watchers. I don't know if that's my two Hi! computers. <laughs> if that's Sarah, maybe. Maybe it's Sarah. What's up, Sarah? What's up? Um, <laughs> or somebody else. Nobody's talking in the chat, so. Well. If you are watching this live right now, say something in the chat. We want to know. We want to know who you are. <laughs> We're not creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so next week, 
We're going to do the next Jim Butcher book, uh, Grave Peril. This one, okay. So remember when we were talking about the first two and how it takes a while for Jim to kind of get into the mm. character and into the world? This is where things start to get really fun. Yes. This is a fun, fun book. Is this where we get Sue? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's so fun because of Sue. And you don't know who Sue is, but you should find out because it's really fun. Yeah. So this is really good. Um, we also so, get Butters, and I really like Butters. Yeah. He's a good character. This is, so um, Grave Peril is what we're doing next week. If you're following instead of the timeline um, by series, our next One Piece books will be um, books four and five with the Syrup Island arc. Is it really that short? Only two volumes? It is. It's another... See, I don't remember these things. Short one. Um, let's see. This is taking a lot more time. Um... Well, anyway. So yes, you can read the Syrup yes, arc where so we get. Um, oh wow, it's. Really so it's basically one and a half. I want. I, I, I wonder if uh, if the anime added more episodes, which it might have done. I'm not sure. But this one's fun. Um, I highly recommend. As as so you know, every title is a pun, so it has to do with graveyards, and and zombies. And dressed so. in being in peril. But are that, you surprised? That is. Par for the course of everyone. Although I have to admit, I can't wait till we get to the skin game because that one's really, really good. Um, and a lot of fun. I love that one. Uh, Which one is that one? We'll talk later. That's the most recent one. So we're still waiting for peace talks, Jim. Okay, I know you're not watching this, but no. don't make us catch up before you release. We're going to. Oh, I'm gonna no. be sad. <laughs> <sighs> Do you want to see us cry on live stream? Yeah, they probably do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so we are going to do Dresden, and then um, it looks like the next hitch Hitchhikers guy. Next Hitchhikers. So many people do um, like all the spinoffs or everything is always that first book of Hitchhikers mm. that there's just not much talk about any of the future Hitchhikers, and that's, that's true. Again, we're we get some really good the, stuff. Yeah, the restaurant at the end of the universe is fun. Yeah. So, but anyway, so next week we're going to do Grave Peril. So I better get to read. And uh, yeah. who's who we got? Uh, nobody. Oh, no one responded. No, no, nobody responded. You guys don't love us. You don't love us. Why don't you love us? That's okay. I know you love us, Cyrus. Cyrus, you should come here and be eye candy. <laughs> Big old cat. And future people watching us, obviously you can't comment in the chat. But we appreciate that you're watching, that you came back to watch this episode. Hey. All right. So that's it for this week. That's it for this Next week. Next week, I think we should be back on schedule with the Saturdays at 4. Yes. Next week is the 21st. The only wedding I know about I'm not actually invited to. <laughs> so there we go, which is great. Um, so yeah, so we should be back on at 4 o'clock on the 21st. And we'll talk about Great Pharaoh. Yes. And hopefully I'll have more tea-like munchies. I, I didn't have any tea. I'll try and make some pumpkin bread. It won't be for you. It'll only be for us. But, <laughs> you know, tis the season tis the season for pumpkin bread. And this is a good, like, Halloween-y kind of episode. So that'll be good. All right, you guys. I don't, okay. think, I don't think Osiris is going to make another appearance. No. I think he's sleeping in the bed. That's because he's adorable. <laughs> so right. anyway, thank you for joining us. Yep. Thank you, and see you next week. Bye. Um, um.